Hello, it's CJ here, and today I am going to talk about all of this. Oh goodness! Oh, it's it's all of my Monica manga. <laughs> this is huge. <laughs> I've had several viewers ask me if I'm going to start on the Madoka manga, where should I begin? And honestly, that's a great question. Every time I go to Barnes & Noble, I like to see what new manga has been released, and I like to look at old manga to see if there's anything that I've missed. Uh, and every time I go to look for Madoka, it is spread across the manga section. I mean, I've even included images from my own Barnes & Noble. Uh, you know, you can find it in the M's and the O's and the P's, and there's a bunch of different kinds of stories and characters, and it's really, really hard to tell where you're supposed to begin, even for people who are familiar with Madoka. So I'm hoping that this video can be used as a guide for you and your friends to determine where you would like to begin and if any of this is even worthwhile for you. So let's begin. Puella Magi Madoka Magica. This is a direct adaptation of the Madoka anime. It was developed alongside the anime, so there are some interesting differences, like Kyubei having different facial expressions, for example. It's a good adaptation, and I would highly recommend it if you prefer reading manga to watching anime. Keep in mind that from this point on, there will be major spoilers for the original series. The Different Story This manga starts off as an adaptation of the Japanese drama CD, The Farewell Story, before it transforms into a what-if tale about one of the separate timelines in the original anime. It basically asks the question, what would have happened if Mommy lived past episode 3? And did she and Kyoko know each other personally? As a mommy fan, I adored this one and would highly recommend it. The Movie Rebellion. The Movie. Rebellion. <sighs> I don't get why they couldn't just call this one Rebellion, but whatever. Much like the manga based on the original anime, this is a direct adaptation of the movie. I have said before in my monthly pickup videos that this adaptation personally beats the movie version for me in terms of story. There are several changes and extra sequences that make this a must for Madoka fans. Uh, a bit of a sad fact, originally this was supposed to be published in the States as a single hardcover, but plans fell through. It's still nice to have the manga, but a nice hardcover single volume would have been awesome. Wraith Arc This manga takes place in between the original anime and Rebellion. It hasn't been published in the States yet, but I would recommend looking out for it, especially given the fantastic quality of Hanakage's previous adaptations. Who is Hanakage, you might ask? Well, they're the mangaka behind all four of these adaptations. I would highly, highly recommend you check out some of their work, because they are definitely, definitely the best Madoka mangaka out there right now. Homura's Revenge Imagine the different story, but not as good. This story questions what would happen if Homura took Madoka with her as she traveled to a new timeline. The two do everything they can to save their friends with the new knowledge they possess from their previous experiences. As far as alternate timeline stories go, I would recommend the different story over this one, since we don't learn many new things about the characters featured within. As a disclaimer, I don't own these next two series personally, but I did read their first volumes at my local Barnes & Noble. Don't worry, I purchase a lot from my local store, so I'm not completely robbing them. Puella Magi Orico Magica this is an original story featuring all new characters alongside our main cast. I personally only read one volume of this series as I couldn't get past its rough art style, though I readily admit that this is a personal complaint. It didn't feel very Monica to me in its gritty artwork and tone. Fans of Kyoko may want to look at the first volume, though. It has two volumes and an extra volume with side content. Puella Magi Suzune Magica This is a series featuring all original characters. Four magical girls find their lives disrupted by a magical girl serial killer. I was actually somewhat interested in this series, but never found myself going past the first initial volume. The character designs are, in my opinion, pretty bland, with the exception of one. It's not bad, though, and I would recommend taking a look at it. So far, it has two volumes published in the States, with a third on the way. Puella Magi Kazumi Magica, The Innocent Malice This was the first manga published to feature characters outside of the anime series in the main roles. It's about a girl who forgets who she is and discovers that she is a magical girl with an incredible destiny. Here's why I didn't buy more than one volume. Yeah, it's... Ugh. It's definitely not as bad as this censor bar might suggest, and you really don't see anything, but I'm not about to challenge the powers of YouTube. Child nudity is featured throughout, and the fan service gets in the way of what could otherwise be an interesting story. 
There are five total volumes of this series, so it's clear that it was at least a bit successful. It's just a shame that I couldn't enjoy it. Puella Magi Tart Magica, The Legend of Jean d'Arc. This series is another one with an original cast. It's about Joan of Arc, who was featured toward the end of the original anime series as a magical girl. I am a huge Joan of Arc fan, so I was ecstatic about this series. It has fantastically designed French and English magical girls. This volume is very particular about telling you what actually happened to the real Joan of Arc at different points of the story. These worded sections interrupt the manga a little more than I would like, but it's nice to see some respect shown toward the real historical figure. It currently has two volumes published in America. Puella Magi Homura Tamara. This series is a collection of four coma or four panel comics. It is a comedy manga featuring Homura as the protagonist. In this version of Monica, Homura's time traveling creates crazy alternate universes that she has to combat in order to try to save her friend. This manga was severely jarring to me at first because the characters act more like fan interpretations of the characters than the actual characters themselves. For what it's worth though, there are some very silly stories in this collection and it definitely brought me more than a few smiles. It has two volumes currently published in America. With those many reviews out of the way, here is the order that I would read all of these different series in. Puella Magi Madoka Magica, if you haven't seen the anime, The Different Story, The Movie Rebellion, and the rest can be read in any order. Here is how I would personally rank all of the manga from best to worst. The Different Story, The Movie Rebellion, Tart Magica, Madoka Magica, Homer's Revenge, Homer Tamara, Suzune Magica, Oracle Magica, and finally, Kazumi Magica. So I hope that was a fair enough guide. You know, I did put some of my own opinions in there, so I do apologize if people weren't looking for many reviews. Uh, but yeah, I hope this makes it a little bit easier next time you go to Barnes & Noble and are just absolutely confused by all the different places that Ma uh, Madoka can be found. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't liked and subscribed already, please do so. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, this is CJ. Signing off.